They're following the clock. He doesn't All right, folks, here's the deal today. We are going to go over some notes. It's probably going to get a little dry, but I will do my best to uh, inform, entertain, and perhaps have a laugh or two along the way. So here's what we're going to talk about today. If I go back to your senior finance um, portfolio, the personal investing tab has five things in it. Examine investing fundamentals, evaluate uh, bonds as an investment, evaluate stocks as an investment, evaluate mutual funds as an investment, and finally, investigate the retirement uh, planning process. We'll get to retirement probably next time we have class, but today I'm just going to focus specifically on the bonds thing because today should be a really, really easy day for you to be able to knock off um, this section of the bonds part. So part two, with evaluating bonds as an investment. And really all you're going to have to do, and this one is probably just going to be pretty close to straight text. I think there's a few things that you could probably screenshot, but explain the advantages and disadvantages of government bonds, explain the advantages and disadvantages of corporate bonds, and the same thing for municipal bonds. Julia Crane, who do you think distributes government bonds? Yeah. 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 Nice. No right. way. Is it something more indefinite? It's not. All right. Paige, what do you think? Who does corporate bonds? Corporations no. do. Corporations. Yep. <laughs> Businesses. Hodge, put your laptop down. <laughs> You're distracting Gribble. <laughs> who distributes who distributes municipal municipal bonds? Municipal bonds. <laughs> hmm? No, no. Municipal. Municipalities. <laughs> what the heck is that? That's a great question. What is a municipality? Sydney, any got any thoughts? You ever heard of a municipality before? Yeah. In what context have you heard of it? A word. I know it. Municipal <laughs> So, sort of. You're saying we're just kidding. You have. Yeah. 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 Municipalities are local governments. Come on. I'll oh, wait, you that. know that because it's the local city or town that is public. Hey, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, you know what? It's it's a Tuesday morning. You're three months away from graduation, so it's going to get a little <laughs> difficult. But <laughs> municipalities are the ones that are, that issue municipal bonds. Now, here's the thing with bonds. Um, first of all, I've given you guys probably way too much information on this, uh, if that's even possible. So on Schoology, there's a folder that's called bonds. And within this folder, there are several things in here. First of all, there's a bond notes slideshow that's in there. No? I'm telling you where it is so you can access it later. <laughs> bond notes slideshow. Bond notes the reading. Bond notes, the class discussion from first hour, which I'm actually re-recording right now because my first hour one was not as good. So you guys are going to get the better show. Where are you going? I just got up and started running away. So again, I'm going to re-record this one, but this should be more than enough information for you guys to answer those three questions as far as the advantages and disadvantages of those different types. But I guess we need to start at the beginning, and this is where I went wrong first hour, was I showed them the wrong slideshow. So the slideshow that I posted the notes for is enormous as far as amount of information, and we quite frankly just don't need that much information. We don't need to spend two weeks talking about bonds and, and things like that, because we're going to keep this kind of light and breezy. But um, what is a bond? Well, it's an IOU. So that's basically what it is. So some sort of entity, government, business, municipality, what they have decided to do is they are going to issue IOUs to people in exchange for money. So for instance, Gribble, his corporation has decided that they're going to issue bonds. And so I'm going to pay him 
$800, and he promises in two years to pay me back $1,000. That's kind of what the whole bond process is. The number is all kind of is just an example, but that's basically what it is. I give him $800, and I just wait, and in two years, you know, he basically gives me a sheet of paper that says I, I owe him, or he owes me $1,000 on this date in two years, yeah. and then I show up on that date, so the bond, he gives me my money. That's how it works. What if I don't give you the money? <laughs> well, we'll get into that. So that's that's how the bond market at its most basic essence form works. It's an IOU for governments, companies, and municipalities. Now, government bonds with the federal government is pretty easy to figure out. You know, government bonds are, you know, we give our money to the government and they give us back money in, in the future. Now, municipal bonds for a lot of things like building projects so if they're gonna fix the highway in a certain place or if they are going to build a hockey arena i'm going to move you you're gonna have to sit over there if you keep touching him but a lot of these things are built with municipal bonds so people have the opportunity to invest their money into something like that and so whatever that thing is that gets built is supposed to be generating money and then they can pay off their bonds in the future. So that's just basically what it is, is it's a loan that companies and businesses and governments engage in. Now, a corporate bond is issued by, as Julia told you, corporations. Oh, that's not working real well. All right, the issue is the entity that writes the bond or gives out the IOU. Now, why do corporations do this? Well, corporations are going to want money. Uh, often, this is a lower interest rate than what a bank would give them. So let's just say, for instance, that the brewers want to build a new baseball stadium. And they go to several banks, and the banks are saying, great, we will give you a loan to buy a new stadium, and we're going to charge you 6.5% interest. Well, the brewers are like, well, actually, we can get the money if we just sell bonds, and we can sell bonds at 4% interest, and people will buy them. So that's one of the reasons why companies might bond. And so school districts do a lot of bonding when, whenever they want to build a new middle school, a hockey arena, some of that other stuff. This is all built with bonds. So people kind of invest in the local government and then get their money back later. Now, uh it's a fixed rate for a longer time period. And that's the thing about bonds that we have to, I have to hold my ruler here for a second. So if stocks are way over here, as far as like the most risky things that you can invest in and your savings account is down here is like the least risky thing you can invest in. The bond market is going to be somewhere over here. We're, we're kind of tiptoeing closer towards the banks and stuff like that. Mutual funds are kind of over here. Bonds are going to be over here. So bonds are definitely not the thing that are going to make you rich. The thing about bonds, though, is that they are really close to guaranteed. And that's the nice thing about them. But the thing is, with guaranteed money and, and investing, when there's low risk, there's generally low reward. There's not a lot of things that are low risk, high reward. So this is one of those things that just isn't going to pay you very much. Now, the other thing about bonds is they're just efficient and easy for corporations to use. I use the Brewers as an example because that's actually how they built Miller Park. So they built Miller Park with a sales tax of the five surrounding communities around, or the five surrounding counties around uh, Miller Park. But they also did it with a whole bunch of bonds that they sold to people with basically the idea of, you know, I'm going to give $800 to the Brewers and in 20 years, my $800 is going to become $1,000. That's the idea of what bonds are. So you don't make a lot. But the thing about bonds is you know exactly how much you're going to get and when you're going to get it. So that's the other thing that's kind of nice about them. Now, as far as bond terminology here, we've got when a bond is repaid, that's called the maturity date. So if I do a, a deal with Gribble and he gives me a coupon, that maturity date is the date where I can go there and finally get my money. Yes. What if the brewers are the one ones that are not supposed to have the money in the bill? I'll get to that. It's, it, it's coming. Now, the face value that's on the bond is the price that an investor pays for that bond. So that would be par value or the principal. So whatever you pay for it. So if it's a $1,000 bond and you pay $800 for it, you just 
you're basically putting eight hundred dollars into something, and you're going to wait for it to turn into a thousand dollars over some period of time. Now, the coupon is also called the, that's the interest payment on a bond. So the coupon rate is basically the interest rate. Here's where we could kind of get into taking a look at interest rates and see if this is actually a good idea. If you find a bond that's going to pay out 2%, is that really going to be worth it? Well, not really, because you can find that in a savings account. If you find a bond that's going to pay out at 5%, is that worth it? Well, it depends on who you are and what you're trying to do. You know, let's just say that you were, you're gifted $1,000 from, you know, your great aunt or something like that, and you have no plans to do anything with it. Well, you can put it into a bond for a couple of years and just let it grow and get some extra money on it and then decide what you're going to do with that money later. So that's kind of the nice thing about this is this is not guaranteed, but this is much, much closer than the other stuff we've talked about. Now, a coupon bond is the most basic bond they have. It pays out interest twice a year. And so the principal or the par value is paid out at the maturity date. So you can get interest payments depending on the type of bond that you get. So for example, with this one, a three-year coupon bond with a coupon rate of 5% and a face value of $10,000, if you buy it at this point, you are going to get interest payments of $250. And then finally, when the maturity date happens, that's when you're gonna get your $10,000. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. There's also some zero coupon bonds that have no interest payments, and the bond is just bought at a reduced value. So for instance, if it was a $10,000 bond and you bought it at $9,000, then you would turn into $10,000 at some point down the road. All right, now I'm gonna skip over this part, but I wanna scroll down to, all right, here's the stuff Gribble was asking about. So as far as stocks versus bonds, the difference between them, Bondholders are generally always repaid. It's very, very rare that bonds don't pay out. That's why they have a pretty small interest rate, though, because there's just very, very low risk to this sort of thing. The corporate bonds, as you might imagine, though, are way riskier because those are companies, those are corporations, they can go under. So could you lose all your money in bonds? Yes, you can, but it's really, really, really hard to do. So some bonds are backed by assets of a company. Do you know what assets are? No. Assets are the things of value that a company owns. So when Enron went under, Enron had that building that was in downtown Houston. Like they could sell the building and, and people could move in there. They had all their computers that people were using. They could sell all those things. They had power barges they could sell. Like Enron had a whole bunch of stuff that they could sell off. Basically, if a company goes bankrupt, they sell off everything that that company has. I mean, all the way down to like the wiring and the walls. Sell off everything and then make a determination, okay, do we have enough to pay back Nathan Gribble who invested in this company with his bonds? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. That's kind of the tricky part about this. Now, the thing about bondholders is if bankruptcy is filed with a company, bondholders do get paid first. So stockholders were not, you know, you guys kind of heard from Enron. They get paid afterwards. So stockholders not repaid, maybe get dividends. So bondholders, this is just a lot safer than the stock market. But the trade-off is you don't make nearly as much money. Now, the types of bonds kind of matter. So the first one up there, you could say that word, right? Debenture. So a debenture bond is the most common, but this is backed by the reputation of the corporation, not assets. So what that means is if this is back right word. So it's like, yeah, you're good. It's fine. Exactly. So if you're going to loan Gribble money, does Gribble actually have like money behind him to you know to pay you back? You're just gonna have to go on his word. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> Would you take out a bond from Apple? Yeah, pretty trustworthy. I mean, it, it would be really, really hard to believe that Apple is going to go under. So Apple, Walmart, some of those big companies, you can go pretty much on their reputation. You know you're taking a little bit of a risk, but you know if 
Your bond's going to go bad if Walmart disappears in the next five years. That doesn't seem very likely to happen. So okay. you should be fine. But the thing is, in the bond market, you can find a lot of companies that are new upstarts and things like that where there's a lot more risk to it. When there's more risk, there's more potential for reward. So for sure, you can find some companies that are really, really sketchy that are looking for money and they'll tell you, we just, we're just selling bonds because we need to get this company off the ground. It may not go off the ground. You might lose your money in it. So that's just the risk that you're going to have to take. So the same thing with the bond market. I mean, you can invest in Apple bonds, but you're not going to make a whole lot of money in it because it's really safe. You can invest in sketchy company bonds. You might make a, a lot more than you would in Apple, but again, there's the risk. So mortgage bonds are secured by the assets of a corporation. Now, these are a lot safer. So for instance, this one, the company goes under, you could lose all your money. This company goes under, you're going to get some of the money back from them selling off their stuff. Which one do you think, you know, has a better interest rate? Well, the top one does because it's riskier. So the more risk you put into something, the more potential for reward, the safer something is, the lower that number is going to be. Now, as far as the other types of corporate bonds, there's also a subordinated debenture, which is unsecured bondholders claim interest after all the others have been paid. So again, a company goes out of business and basically people start to line up as far as who gets paid. And so off of this line of people, they just start giving out money to pay off everybody once that company goes under until they run out. So unsecured bondholders claim interest after all the others have been paid. You're kind of at the back of the line as far as the bondholders for that one. There's also convertible bonds that can be traded for common stock. So if you have a company that's doing really, really well, if that sketchy company you put your bonds into actually turns out to be turning out money and, and making a profit and stuff like that, and you're like, well, that's kind of a nice company, you can't convert your bonds into stock. Oops. Uh. Yeah, I don't know why my stuff is not showing up here. I've been having some huge problems with this power, with this thing today. All right, now the other thing I wanted to show people today, as far as bonds and interest rates, so here's the thing. With banks, they offer interest rates as, as well, but you might get 2% interest. So if you have the choice of where you're going to put your money, into a bank or into a bond, well, bonds just make more. But the thing is, is your money's kind of tied up here until that maturity date happens. So this is really kind of your opportunity to sit down and do the math and figure out, okay, am I better off just putting my money into this or am I putting my money into this? As far as your money goes, it's entirely up to you as far as what you want to do with it. Like if you have a savings account for a car and you know you're not going to need that car for two or three years, well, take that money and put it into a bond. You'll make more money off of it rather than just keeping it in your savings account. But the problem is, like I said, you're kind of locked into it until that bond matures. Now, the other thing, too, that's kind of interesting about this is when interest rates are down, bond rates go up. And they kind of go the opposite, too. So when interest rates are up, bond rates go down. This is basically how businesses decide whether or not they are going to how they're going to fund certain projects. So if West Salem School District wants to build a, I don't know, we kind of got everything right now. I'm trying to think of the name. An artificial turf football stadium. So we're going we're gonna to build a turf stadium. And we go to a bank and the bank's going to offer us 4% on an interest rate. We might not do that because maybe we can get a better rate if we sell bonds for it. So that's kind of where businesses are always looking for the lowest rate that they have to pay out for whatever that is. And customers are always looking for the higher rate of the two. All right, so I know I'm kind of losing some people here, but that's kind of the idea behind bonds. They're just IOUs. Now, as far as answering all your questions on this part, it's kind of the same answer for all of them because the advantages of a government bond, well, how likely is it the U.S. government is going to go out of business? We've got bigger problems than just your bond if the U.S. government goes out of business. So you're very likely going to make your money back in a government bond. The thing is, are you going to make very much? No, because it's really, really safe. Now, the other thing you'll actually find is that there's a lot of mutual funds 
that actually invest a little bit of that mutual fund into bonds just to make absolutely sure because they're safe. Now, the advantages and disadvantages of corporate bonds, well, the advantage is you can make more money in corporate bonds, but the disadvantage is there's more risk to it. The advantages and disadvantages of municipal bonds, they would say that the, the advantages are it's still a government bond, even though it's local government, so you're still likely to get paid. But the thing is, when you buy one of these, you're actually contributing to something locally that is actually going to benefit your community. So you're putting money into something that's going to benefit, you know, they put a pay of the new road on Highway 16 or something like that. It's benefiting the community and you put your money into that and you get paid because of that. But it kind of works the same way as government bonds. All right. On these three things, you guys should be able to answer these like right now. So go ahead and get your laptops out and do that. And I'm going to give you guys about five minutes to answer these and then we will talk BBC. Second one, personal investing. Oh, which one? Mm -hmm. Municipal? Mm -hmm. Let's not make as much money as we do with some other investment opportunities. It's another one that's a it's a local government, so it's it's government backed. You're gonna get paid. You can make very much.
что да. Mm -hmm. What? A corporate bond? It doesn't end. You lose all your money. Depends on what kind of bond you have. Some of the bonds, I mean, you would be in line to get some of that stuff, but it's not a sure thing. The corporate bonds are the less of a sure thing of of all of the bonds. They are the most risky, so therefore, you can make the most money. Shack, or you can get a shack. Imagine you get back to the home in two thousand years. Shack. 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 All right, once you guys have this thing done, go ahead and put your laptops down so I can get an idea where everybody is. So this is just to give you guys an idea of where corporate bonds have been just in the last year or so. So first of all, the corporate bonds, the, the AAA ones, are like the – best rated bonds that there are, which means they are the least amount of risk. And this is pretty much how they've been paying out in the last year. So last year around this time, bonds were fine until all of a sudden we had everybody needs to go home. And within the span of a couple of days, the interest rate on bonds almost doubled. Because remember at this time, interest rates went down. That's why bond rates went kind of through the roof. And so then as the market kind of started to come back, notice that this kind of goes down again. So this is something that almost works in inverse of the stock market, which is good if you're invested in the stock market, right? If you have a whole bunch of stuff in the stock market and you have some bonds. If your stock market stuff ever starts going bad, well, your bond rates might start doing actually a little bit better. But this is where they are today, 3.13%. Now, that is significantly better than nothing. It's better than a savings account. It's, it's a, not great, though. It's not going to be the kind of thing that makes you rich, but it is going to increase the value of your money over time. It's really, really safe. It's a great way to not lose your money. So 
like I said, this is like the the best bond rates. As you go down a little bit further into the ones that are a little dicier, you're going to get into like the five, six, seven percent, which is a little bit more of like a medium risk mutual fund kind of meets high risk bonds. So they, they kind of intersect somewhere around 6%, 7%, somewhere in that range. So that's kind of the idea. Now, the reason I keep bringing this up is because just put out a new VBC for you guys today. So the next VBC is called diversification. It's kind of uh, one of the last ones we have for investing, but diversification is about the idea of being invested in things, of having different options out there. So it's not just, you know, Julia taking all of her money and putting it into Disney and just saying, I'm going to put all my retirement, all my stuff into Disney. It's the, well, you know this stuff, don't you? Yeah. But... <laughs> so it's the idea though of diversification, not just within the stock market, diversification with making sure you have a mutual fund, you know, making sure that you put some money into a couple of bonds. If you have money in bonds and a mutual fund and several different stocks, you're going to be diversified. So if ever, if ever anything happens to one of those companies, you're not going to feel it as bad as you normally would. It's kind of a way of hedging your bet. That's what some of those people like the line worker for Enron, that's what his whole problem was. Is he just kept putting money back into his company, back into that one company where he worked. All of his life savings was invested in that one company. What he should have done is probably had other retirement accounts. Go ahead and put your money into Enron, but as long as you've got, you know, a couple of mutual funds here and some money in bonds over here, that's the way to diversify your portfolio. So if Enron goes, you're you're disappointed about that, but you didn't lose everything because of Enron. That's what diversification does. So when they talk about having an investment portfolio, your portfolio is actually a group of all of your investments that a person has. So it says you're like most teens, your investment in portfolio probably uh, consists of a savings account. But as you get older, start adding on to these things. Have a mutual fund, have an annuity, have some other things that you can kind of put your money into so that, you know, you're not putting all your eggs into one basket. Uh, as far as what are the benefits of, a diversif of diversification, they actually go over the the definitions of a bear market. So a time when stocks seem to stay the same or uh, the same level or lose ground, that's considered to be a bear market. Uh, diversification all helps you, also helps you take advantage of bull markets. So basically when the stock market is good. In the last year alone, you guys have had so much movement in the stock market that it's you've seen kind of the whole thing, how it, how it works. Like early last March, it was way up here and then it just cratered in March. But then between like, you know, April of last year and September of this year, it had a huge rise. And since we started the stock market game, it's been kind of a, there's, there's a kind of a downturn and now it's just kind of holding and not doing anything. So we're kind of back into a little bit of a bear market now. Who knows what's going to happen in a couple of months. It could go right back up again and, and look totally different. So as far as these different um, I think the last thing that they have on here that I wanted to go over today was should you get an investment or financial planner? It's a personal choice that everybody has to make. I am absolutely not going to tell you that a financial planner is a bad idea. I have a financial planner. I don't talk to him all that much, but it's it's not a bad idea to get advice from other people, not just from one source. I would say not only diversify what you're in, but diversify where you get your information from. Because if I'm the only one who's telling you guys investment advice, I'll be the one to tell you that I don't know everything. So there's certainly other people out there that are smarter than me and, and some different things, and that could help. All right. So VBC number five is officially assigned. So we got a lot done today. Yeah, kind of proud of how we did. Oop, got to take retirement off of there. All right. So you guys only have class for like four more minutes, right? Okay. How'd your basketball game end up?